Coming up on Kojigo News, circling socially can be a little bit confusing. Reaction from the Nipissing First Nation Chief about Black Lives Matter and bike paths, new ones, good or bad. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to this Monday edition of Kojiko News. I am Greg Estabrooks. Well, as the province of Ontario inches closer towards a full reopening, more relaxed measures are being implemented almost daily to allow for more social contact. One such measure is the inception of what is being called social circles. Our Clark Heupel catches up with the Chief Medical Officer of Health to try to dissect this new measure amid the pandemic. Well, social circles are groups of people, no more than 10, that can get together and uh, not have to social distance. Uh, the reason that they're doing this is really to help out for mental health and well-being, as well as it can provide care for the elderly or child care needs. And it, the other thing that is an advantage with these social circles are that uh, it could help with contact tracing if somebody does become positive. I could see a few difficulties arising. People, they have to make a list of 10 people that they want to see while not socially distant. How do people keep track of this? Do you recommend people write it down and just keep a list of 10 people? Well, certainly there, there are um, uh, guidelines to uh, pe help people with the uh, social circles. And you can go to our website at www.myhealthunit.ca and um, uh, there's more information that would be available. But essentially what you want to do is you want to limit the number to no more than 10 people. Start with those that are within your household or that those that might visit your household. And if you uh, are under 10 and you want to extend it, you can do so. But in doing so, you want to include that person, but you also want to include their family because they're in contact with them. So make sure there's no more than 10 people. One concern that arises is each person in that circle has their own circle and it extrapolates exponentially to the amount of people. How does it work? Like if, no. say I'm in a circle with my mom and my mom has a circle with her 10 people how does that work they shouldn't be doing that okay can uh, you explain you want to make sure that you only belong to the one circle and not go outside and start getting more and more circles because it really won't have an effect at all so if i go and see my neighbor who's in my circle yeah. and i don't socially distance with them and they have their own friends and their own circle. I, I don't understand the difference between circles. Like if my neighbors go and visit their friends who are in their circle, but I'm not friends with those and people. They, they, they shouldn't be joining your circle. You should keep your circle to people who are going to stay within that circle. Okay, so it would be 10 close friends and those close friends or family, or family do not see anyone else unless social distance. Stay in that circle. Do you see any issues arising with this? Yes potentially people won't do that and and that's where people have to be responsible if if they don't follow the guidelines it's not going to work and we're going to see more cases so what we need people to do is is follow the guidelines and if somebody does become symptomatic it's very important that you isolate immediately and then arrange to have testing done all right let's move on to the covid board for this day it is one new positive test to talk about out of 793 people that were tested. So 9,630, we have 30 positives. In other news, a well-known North Bay businessman is facing a number of fraud and associated charges. This stems from a fraud complaint that went from the local police to the OPP. And the OPP made the announcement that 57-year-old Renzel Silveri of North Bay has been charged with the following fraud over $5,000, seven counts, two counts of theft over 5,000, criminal breach of trust contrary to section 336 of the criminal code, and falsification of books and documents contrary to 397 of the criminal code. The OPP said they will have more details at a later date. Silveri has an August court date. 
In other news, on this Monday, we can tell you that Nipissing First Nation Chief Scott McLeod went to social media a few days ago to offer his reaction to the local and national Black Lives Matters protests or demonstrations. These were triggered by the death of an unarmed black man in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the hands of a white police officer. While McLeod is happy to see the support by the majority, he says there are many racially motivated crimes in this country involving Indigenous people that need to be paid much greater attention to by all Canadians. I, I wrote a piece on social media the other day just talking about that very same issue and, uh, you know, not to take any uh, spotlight away from Black Lives Matter, but what is, is more concerning to me is that, um, you know, the average Canadian um, you know, goes along uh, with their daily lives thinking that that's over in the U.S. and it's not here in Canada. Um, you know, even our top, uh, the top politician in Ontario, um, you know, Doug Ford, was uh, on record saying that there is no uh, systematic uh, racism, uh, deep roots of such in uh, Ontario or Canada. And, I mean, that's just, you know, blatant ignorance on, on his part. He quickly backpedaled. But, uh, I mean, if our, you know, top politicians in this country um, don't, uh, fully comprehend Canada's history. How how do we expect average Canadians to? And so that's that's my concern. We see um, we uh, see signs of uh, uh, issues with systematic racism in the police, whether it's the uh, you know the uh, uh, ten or so uh, teens that were uh, found in the uh, in the river in, in Thunder Bay over the last uh, decade, or uh, you know some of the instances uh, out west, uh, Colton Bushy, to name uh, just just one um, of things that are built in the system that makes it uh, um, a racially motivated system against Indigenous people. Um, you know that's alive and well in Canada, and it's been our fight for uh, for for decades to try and bring light to it. So when you know, the average non-Indigenous, uh, uh, non-people of colour, um, uh, you know, jump on that bandwagon. It's good to see them getting behind Black Lives, Lives Matter. But, um, you know, we, we need to take care of our own yard first before, uh, you know, worrying about uh, what else is going on. And, and I think uh, people have to take a good look at what's going on here in Canada. How does one trade in a pandemic? How does one create jobs in a pandemic? That is one of the biggest challenges for Nipissing MPP and Economic Development and Trade Minister Vic Fideli. Fideli claims, though, he's got the machinery already in place. We saw in the last uh, uh, StatsCan numbers that in Ontario, we stabilized. Uh, we still had a slight dip, but we did gain uh, almost 15,000 uh, manufacturing jobs in the last uh, stats. Um, now that auto is back working, now that construction's back working, we should see tens upon tens of thousands uh, extra uh, that were, would be added to the stats for at the end of June. So we're looking forward to uh, the early July stats coming out and that'll give us a pretty good idea of, of the, the, the recovery phase. Speaking of the recovery phase, Fidelli is known for his unbending optimism. How hard is it for him to rally his cabinet mates and those people in his ridings during these tough times? Tough times that have lasted for three months and maybe lasting a few months more. Well, cabinet's a pretty uh, blunt opportunity to have a, a, a real good heart-to-heart. -heart. We have what's... Uh, uh, periods where we can just let it all out. We ask each other what's happening in your region, what's happening in your, your sector as well, whether it's natural resources or transportation. So it is a good opportunity to learn what's happening. And yes, uh, you know, there are areas that are harder hit. Uh, and so we just need to continue to talk about the things that we can do to help the families, but always keeping the health and safety and the well-being of the families top of mind. Uh, yes, uh, regions would like to open, but uh, it, you know, we're still not out of the woods yet and we still ask everybody to follow the social distancing guidelines and, and uh, make sure that all the pain that we went through for three months, that 14 and a half million people went through, isn't for naught and we don't have a recurrence. How about the recurrence of trade, both interprovincial and international? That is his portfolio and Fideli knows it's been a three-month, well, 
freeze. Well, I've got all my teams in Toronto working on uh, all three at the same time, the three being interprovincial trade, our trade with the U.S., and our international trade. Just this week, we had our very first uh, virtual trade show. It was in the biotech field, um, and uh, it was an exciting opportunity to, to talk about Ontario's uh, uh, state in the bio sector. We had 35 companies. We have about 300,000 employees in that sector. So this was our first trial. It's a week-long trade show, electronic trade show. So we'll see how that goes. And that may well be how we do our international trade for the next six months or more. Uh, with the U.S., um, with NAFTA 2.0 taking place on, on July 1st, that means we have a whole new set of rules and we're excited about that opportunity, that we've got a full team working on how we can maximize that. Uh, and interprovincial trade, as I've said before, just the Tuesday before COVID struck, or the Tuesday after COVID struck, uh, I was scheduled to have dinner with one of the premiers in, an, in another province to ratify some of our interprovincial deals. We were that close, so we're reactivating that again as well. So we've got all three uh, those irons in the fire. Nipissing Tamiskaming MP Anthony Rota was supportive, although not in attendance, for the Black Lives Matters demonstrations in North Bay that took place the weekend of June 6th and 7th. Rota says he's also concerned about the recent arrest of an Indigenous chief by the RCMP. Rota talks about both of those cultural issues. Last week, Prime Minister Trudeau talked about his concerns about the RCMP arrest and takedown of First Nation Chief Alan Adam. Here's Rhoda's take. Well, I mean, I've seen the tape, what was played on the news, and it's certainly disturbing, and I think it, it requires uh, an investigation, if not an inquiry. The Nipissing Tamiskaming MP was not at either Black Lives Matter demonstrations last weekend, but he did tell organizers he would be unable to attend. Nevertheless, he says he believes in what they are fighting for. The demonstration was amazing, and that shows that there is an interest in North Bay, and we want to see justice here. And racism does exist. No matter what you look at, racism exists right across the country, and it's up to us as individuals to call it out when it happens. Now, politicians can't legislate tolerance, but what do they do in the fight against racist beliefs and activities? Well, it starts with demonstrations like what happened here in North Bay and across the country. And it has to keep going. What has to happen is you bring it forward and you keep reminding people what's right and what's wrong. Because sometimes some people who are bigots or are racist don't even realize it. They don't realize they're hurting someone. Some of them are just outright ignorant and do do it. But what it is is when it does occur, bring it up. Make sure that we're aware of it and that we're putting an end to it. There's been an easing somewhat of travel restrictions about seeing loved ones that have been basically held captive in one way or another in foreign countries. That has been uh, loosened somewhat. Yeah, family reunification is something that uh, this new legislation takes care of. What it does is it allows uh, families uh, who have uh, foreign nationals, so if they're Canadian but they're working somewhere else, to come back to uh, Canada, uh, have your parents, uh, children or spouse come back and so that you can be together. Now granted, once you do come back from another country, you still have that 14-day quarantine that you have to go through. Finally, I want to ask you this question. There's been a lot of uh, economic stimulus from the federal government to Canadians. The COVID crisis is still a crisis, although it has diminished, especially in some sectors of the country. Will the <laughs> government be changing it? Well, all the, uh, all the help that has been put forward to, to help people with COVID has an expiry date, and most of it is petering out in the next month or two. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the economy starts kicking in again and uh, we'll see what comes from the government as far as uh, picking up again should the economy not come forward the way uh, it's planned to come forward. Break time has arrived here on Kojiko News. When we come back we'll be talking new bike lanes right after this. Welcome back, everybody. An active transportation pilot project is translated into a paint job on Memorial Drive and much more. Last week, bike lanes were set up 
along the entire stretch of Memorial Drive, but the rollout of the project left much to be desired. Clark Heupel is standing by on Memorial with more. Yes, Greg, the broken white lines appeared on Memorial Drive mid last week on either side of the road. There is no signage to indicate what these are for. However, Councillor Marcus Tignelli took the lead on this and he posted on social media accounts explaining that they are indeed bike lanes. I had several questions for Councillor Tignelli, including the lack of signage, as well as why do bike lanes need to be implemented when there is a safe place to bike on the Cape Paceway. Those questions and more in this interview with Councillor Tignanelli. So the uh, Memorial Drive uh, pilot program has taken place for bike lanes. Uh, so this is for active transportation, which is for commuters, those looking to get from point A to point B. Uh, we've heard lots of people saying, well, we already have the bike path. It's The Cape Paceway is not a bike path only. It's not for uh, commuting purposes. It's a multi-use rec trail. Uh, and you see lots of people inline skating, skateboarding, uh, learning how to cycle, uh, people even walking. So we would encourage people walking to use the sidewalk, people cycling for commuter purposes to use the new bike lanes. Uh, and people using for recreational purposes to continue using the Cape Paceway. That makes sense. That being said, there seems to be a lack of signage. Yep. And people that don't have Facebook don't know what's going on. So how are we going to move forward with educating the public? Yeah, so uh, the reason that the painting was done first is because we included the line painting in the citywide uh, tender for line painting. So it was the same company that did it all. Uh, so they come to town for two days, do all of our lines. Uh, but the signage and every 75 meters there will be cyclist logos painted uh, as per the provincial guidelines on cycling lanes. So we're going to adhere to all those standards. When can we expect to see that? Uh, that's supposed to take place this week or next week. Now, one other comment I've been hearing from people is why not do it on McIntyre? Why not do it on McEwen, Airport, Airport Road, where there's busy, busy and high speed traffic? Will that be coming? Yeah, so uh, we are going to be expanding uh, about 20 more kilometers of bike lanes coming to North Bay this summer, uh, which is huge news. Uh, the reason that the pilot program is taking place in Memorial is one, the road was wide enough. Uh, that's the key detail. And it's actively used by uh, so many people that cars and cyclists will get used to interacting with each other uh, in a high volume area. What's your message to drivers? Uh, to drivers is uh, cyclists only need a meter and a half of space. Uh, a lot of uh, vehicles giving me almost too much space and putting other vehicles at risk. So uh, yeah, and uh, you know, to, to watch your blind spots. And to continue along concerning the biking tips while utilizing bike lanes, it's my personal message to cyclists out there to please stay on the side of the road with the flow of traffic in your direction. So if you're heading south on Memorial Drive, use the right hand side. It is illegal to bike towards traffic. Also, personal experience, late last week I was exiting the drive through exit on Castles and a cyclist came on the wrong side of the road on the curb lane right at my nose of my vehicle, narrowly missing, running into me. So please, bike on the correct side of the road when cycling and follow all safety procedures including helmet, gloves and reflectors. And you're supposed to have a bell as well. Let's ring the bell back at the news desk, back to Greg Estabrooks. All right, I'm surprised you didn't say something else. But anyway, Clark I will have the weather and much more right after this. Weather is brought to you by Canador College. Great things happen here. I have a feeling I need to quench my thirst. Welcome back to Coach Go News. I'm Clark Heipel here on Water Street. I am here for your five day weather forecast brought to you by Canador College. It's also the 10th installment of Streets You Didn't Know Existed. A big shout out to Murray Beyer, Coach Go News and your TV viewer for submitting this request for a street to appear on streets you didn't know existed. It is the 10th one and I at least have 10 more to go. And with your suggestions, perhaps we can get to 30 episodes or 40 by the time the summer is through. Now on Water Street, I'm gonna give a couple more hints before I give away the exact location. We did it backwards this Monday, live on our Facebook page. I typically 
show you a couple scenes of where I am and give you a couple hints. Today, I did the live video from our Your TV studio, naming the street and giving no more detail. So many people said yes, many people said no to whether or not they know where Water Street is. So let me give you a couple hints. If you're hungry, while well, you need to quench your thirst as well, it's a quick skip and a hop over to the Northgate Shopping Center, recently reopened during the coronavirus pandemic. You can get yourself a iced coffee from a certain coffee shop in the mall, or perhaps you can go to a local grocery store and pick up a sandwich and drink, which I tend to do on workdays. Now let's give you the panoramic view. Heavy traffic in the area. Oh, you probably know where I am now seeing that behind me. And for my best estimation, there are three houses on Water Street, which is divided into two, thanks to the wooded area. And there's a couple bike paths and foot trails as well. So Water Street is located off Bank Street and Bank Street is located off Trout Lake Road. Thanks to this new series, now you know how to get to Water Street. Let's take a look at the five day forecast brought to you by Candor College. All right, as these weather graphics go up, look at that tonight on this Monday night, clear skies, a low of 10. Tuesday, the 16th of June, my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. I'll see you soon. Mainly sunny skies, high 25. Humid X making it feel one degree warmer and the UV index at nine. So virtually cover up or you will get burnt. On Tuesday night, clear skies, low of 11. Wednesday, the 17th of June, as we approach the Father's Day weekend. Sunny skies, high 28, clear, warm, low of 16, overnight Wednesday night. Thursday, 29 and 16, same story, sun. And Friday, clouds in the sky, still nice though. High 25, low 17. Turning the page back to the Almanac for the amazing weekend we just had. The high on Sunday was 20, the low was seven, the normals 23 and 11. Well, there you have it. There is your five day weather picture. Do stay tuned. Our Greg Estabrooks, who's getting a tan with all this sunshine, will have your sports cast right after this. Welcome back everybody. Although OUA athletics on ice literally till January, Nipissing Lakers ringette team and Nipissing Lakers Athletics. Proud to announce that Stephen Hamilton has been named as the team's new ringette coach, taking over the program as it moves forward. He's been involved in the sport for 33 years in a variety of capacities. That is it for news, weather and sports for this Monday. Clark Heupel in the big chair on Tuesday. We'll see you then live at five. Thank you.